Hi there, I'm Dean Heskin, President and CEO of Swiss America Trading. You are tuning in to yet another episode of The Secret War on Cash, our podcast where we look at and discuss different things taking place in our financial markets, in the economy, uh, which has been a pretty up and down uh, situation over the course of this year. And uh, they're anticipating a little more of that in the uh, year ahead. And I do hope we find you all uh, refreshed, having a good Thanksgiving holiday that we just completed, spending a lot of time with your family, your friends, uh, giving thanks for all the blessings in your life. Speaking of blessings, I've got with me my co-host again, Chris Agalestos. How are you, Chris? Great. Thank you. A little worn oh. out, but that's okay. I'll recover. Thanksgiving will do that to you. Family sure. Family is great to have around, but it definitely takes its toll. You sometimes need a little, <laughs> little break from the family. Um, <laughs> Well, today, Chris, um, we're going to be talking about money, specifically digital currencies. And to say that the cash systems of the world are changing could be one of the most gross understatements of the year. Blockchain technology and digital currencies are not only here, but it's looking like they're here to stay. And Kristalina Georgieva, Georgieva, I think is how you pronounce her name, mm -hmm. uh, the managing director of the IMF, was pretty vocal to this point uh, in some remarks that she recently made. In her comments, she mentions how currently there are 60 percent of the world's nations that are exploring the use of digital currencies. Um, Eleven countries are already actively using them. She went on to cite several reasons we should embrace this new kind of cash. And from a practical standpoint, I have to say it does kind of make sense. You know, it gives you quicker transactions, less cumbersome than, than physical cash, like dollars in your pocket. Um, just overall, she alludes to it just being more efficient. So what are the negatives? Well, the concerns I've been following talk about a lot of the, the about the, the lack of privacy that exists for one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's literally nothing other than a, than a digital statement. And if there's a problem, what do you do? Where do you go? And now I know you, you could kind of say the same thing with our current banking system when it comes to loss and trying to sort it out, you know, but to me, CBDCs just seem like something next level. So what what could you tell us about this new type of money, Chris, the, this, this future money, as they're calling it? Yeah, well, of course, uh, you know, a lot of us have probably, um, you know, heard of, of Bitcoin, um, you know, one of the bigger uh, blockchain uh, technologies. Um, but these central bank digital currencies, what they're really trying to do is kind of capitalize on the, the popularity of blockchain technology, which, you know, has been around, you know, in its current form about maybe 15 years now. Um, however, uh, even though there's a similarity there, that's where it all ends. Um, you know, the central banks uh, do not want to compete uh, with a uh, Bitcoin, something that they can't control. And so they're, you know, uh, developing their own uh, digital currencies. And the big issue there, again, is a total lack of privacy. You know, when you have something electronic, every little transaction, every single thing you do, wherever you have money, wherever you move money, it can all be recorded. And, uh, you know, people are concerned, I think maybe rightfully so, with uh, central banks being able to control everything that uh, is related to your spending. You know, if, if they want to freeze your assets or seize assets, like we've seen even banks do, and, and people are worried about it, um, you know, but at least you have the option of having some cash or having some money in a different bank account. Um, what do you do here when it's all all centralized? Um, right. You know, what if, uh, you know, it starts off innocently enough and, um, you know, a few years down the road, uh, maybe the IRS is just automatically taking their tax money from you, um, you know, uh, every month or every time you get a, a check deposited, maybe they automatically just take their piece, um, you know. Uh, hacking, obviously a problem with anything electronic like this, but where you have in um, typical blockchain technology, uh, you don't have a central store of data. It's, uh, you're, you know, the data is stored on, on multiple computer systems. With a central bank system like this, everything would be in one location. So uh, if sure. the IRS gets hacked, you know, 400 million Americans uh, have their financial data compromised. Whereas right now, let's say Chase gets hacked, you know, maybe that hits 
15, 20 percent of the depositors in the country. I, I don't know exactly what their share is, but um, but, you know, if it was the IRS and they had everybody's data, I mean, that's a that's a big, big problem. So there's a whole host of, of negatives. And of course, you never hear the central banks uh, and the government's talking about those. Right. They they sure. just talk about the ease of being able to transact and making it sound really safe when I think, in fact, you know, we all know there's some negatives that they're conveniently uh, ignoring. Oh, for sure. Well, you know, it's, and it's interesting, too, when you switch over to if, if it, again, if this transition occurred to this completely electronic type system where they have the elimination of cash, you know, it it depends on people having confidence in it. I mean, it is a complete right. uh, expression of one's confidence to rely on a system such as this. And I bring that up because as we've talked about in, in earlier or other podcasts, um, all these situations that, uh, and problems that banks have been having currently where, you know, clients uh, uh, or depositors accounts have been just frozen inexplicably. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. have lost access to their, their monies for days, even months trying to get uh, things sorted out. Some even, I think over a year now. And that's what just, it's amazing that we, the talks of this change, are, which again relies so heavily on confidence is happening at a time where I, I would say, by, well, I, in fact, we can say the confidence people have in the banking system is probably worse than ever in so much as right. that the BBB just reported that, that banking problems throughout the country, that's their number one complaint right now. So, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know if we can stop this change, but by the same token, I don't know if it's something we should be speeding into. We may need to hit the brakes a little bit. Yeah, pump the brakes, as they say. Yep. Just a tiny bit. Well, in, now in other digital currency news, we have BRICS. Um, we've been discussing this for a bit now as well. And it appears that this alliance, we'll call it, is, is picking up momentum literally by the day. And you won't really see BRICS being mentioned without them referring to what, quote, they're calling de-dollarization, which is basically mm -hmm. saying they're looking to dump dollars. And it wasn't that many years ago, Chris, when other countries wouldn't even think about making a move that might be perceived as anti-U.S. But now it's like they're liter literally relishing in it. And the article on your screen or, or the link, if you're listening, you'll see that as much momentum that BRICS has gained this year, they're expecting even more in 2024. Yeah. Now, I guess, Chris, can, can the U.S. economy withstand this de-dollarization that they're talking about? Well, you know, uh, withstand. Um, yeah, I think we can get through it uh, maybe without a complete collapse. But does that mean that it's going to be uh, positive? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of times people think of de-dollarization as is the dollar just going to go away tomorrow? And, and while that certainly could happen, uh, it doesn't have to completely go away to cause all of us a lot of pain and, and problems. And as you said, uh, this movement is really picking up speed, uh, especially, you know, this last year. And, uh, and it's expected to keep going, you know, in, well into 2024, obviously. So, but what does it mean to people? Uh, well, for one, much higher borrowing costs. Uh, so, you know, uh, interest uh, rates uh, and what you pay to, to borrow money, to buy homes, to buy vehicles, to do whatever it is you need to do. Um, is going to climb. So, I mean, that's obviously going to uh, affect our standard of living. Uh, lower stock market values. Uh, you know, I, I think probably the bulk of the country that has uh, some retirement savings has a, a good portion of it tied directly to the stock market. So if, if stock values are down, what does that mean for people's savings? They're, they're going to have less money. Sure. Um, you know, the government is not going to have the flexibility that it has had to be able to uh, print and spend um, sort of willy nilly. Right. Uh, and so if they're going to be cutting uh, programs, um, you know, what does that mean for for those of us, you know, living here in the country or relying on those programs? You know, what's our infrastructure going to look like? What are our roads going to be like? Um, you know, that just a few months back, I was in, in California uh, with my family for a, a long weekend. And I mean, 
as soon as you cross the border, you realize that the California roads and their their budget is not as well managed as it is here in Arizona. Um, so what if what if that is happening on a federal level, uh, you know, all across the country? Um, obviously, high inflation, uh, you know, which people have already experienced, especially since COVID, right? You know, our grocery prices uh, have sure. gone through the roof. That's going to continue. So, um, you know, all of these are negative things, even if the dollar is able to kind of hang on a little bit, uh, we're still going to feel uh, those effects. And I think that's why you hear us talking so much about diversifying and not having all of your eggs in, in one basket. And that's why so many people are realizing, you know, it, it makes sense for me to have some of my uh, savings in, in gold, something physical and tangible that, that um, you know, can weather the storm. It doesn't mean you may be completely unscathed, but to be able to get through it is, I, I think, the the most important thing. Sure, sure. Well, and again, with the, you know, that as much information as is as, as out there and maybe perhaps that we're trying to provide here on a, our podcasts, um, no one knows for sure what's going to happen. Um, that, however, is the reason to be diversified. And as we've discussed before as well, the benefit of owning gold is that it is something that um, you can literally go put your hands on. Uh, mm -hmm. It is convertible into every currency throughout the world, literally uh, is exchanged freely just in and of itself. So it's not, and I, I guess what I'm trying to get at here is it's not dollar dependent in terms of it maintaining value as these transitions occur. Uh, gold has seen several currencies throughout the course of its lifetime uh, of centuries. And mm -hmm. The, the, you know, it, it absorbs itself into whatever that currency or medium of exchange and whatever economy or marketplace it's in. So one of the great values or benefits to actually owning that physical gold. So, That's well, right. thanks, Chris, for all that. And, you know, if you'd like yeah. more information on, you know, this and other topics like it, you know, the title of our podcast is Secret War on Cash. We have a tremendous report. It's been our most ever requested report. Uh, the Secret War on Cash, which is why we entitled our podcast this. If you contact our offices at 800-289-2646, uh, you can ask for a free copy of that, or you can even do so online. It's uh, www.swissamerica.com. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Continue to please do so. Follow us on social media if you're not already. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, by, by tuning in or subscribing, we can get you this kind of information and other things as they continue to develop. So thanks again for being with us, Chris, and we we'll look forward to more information in the days and weeks ahead.